Hey everyone, this video is going to cover the PowerPoint in the week nine module on um, avoiding plagiarism. Um, I know you guys have taken comp two, um, so you have hopefully already learned about uh, conducting research, how to find sources, how to choose sources wisely, how to then take that information from those sources and decide how to use it in your essay, how to cite your sources properly, how to do a reference page at the end of the essay. Um, hopefully you've done all of that in the past, you should have, and um, hopefully you remember the basics of it. I don't, I, this, this class is not about teaching you how to do research, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time um, on these lessons, but I do want to give you sort of a refresher um, going into uh, making the revisions for your final draft of the course project. Um, so we're talking about building credibility and avoiding plagiarism. Just keep in mind that you are writing a, an argumentative or persuasive research paper. Yes, there's research involved. But the fact that it is argumentative and persuasive, you need to rely on your own argument more than anything, your own ideas about your topic. Write the paper yourself, take ownership of it. You are presenting your unique point of view on your topic. And hopefully you have picked a topic that you are interested in something that, a topic that means something to you. And if you have, then you should have some strong feelings about that topic and the argument that you're presenting. Own that, make it yours. Yes, you are required to have a, a handful of sources to help support your ideas, but this essay, the argument that you're presenting, should be yours. Be honest, accurate, and measured. Um, show respect to your reader and the topic and the opposing viewpoints. And show that you've done careful research, right? Um, when you're writing with poor use of sources, like if you're not really using your sources very well, the paper might read like just a bunch of unconnected facts, just kind of plopped down into paragraphs. Um, they, it might sound like unsupported opinions or quotations that are just plunked in the middle of the essay. If you're not doing careful research, if you're not using your sources well, you might end up having some very contradictory or illogical statements in the essay. Um, if you're not using your sources properly, you might distort what a source was actually saying. You might mislead the reader. You might give them false information and completely twist, end up twisting what the original source was trying to say. Um, at its worst, using poor sources looks like plagiarism. Um, a strong use of sources the paper is going to center on your ideas, ideas that are advanced with thoughtful engagement while crediting the sources. Um, it's going to offer analysis of an argument, and it's going to be built on reliable information from quality sources. And those sources are just there to help show your reader that your argument is valid, right? But it's still your argument. It needs to be mostly your words, your thoughts, your ideas. Um, you know, the three ways that you can use source information, you can summarize, you can paraphrase, and you can use a direct quote, right? So summarizing is taking a large chunk of information and literally summarizing it. You're not offering opinion or analysis, you're just summarizing the information. Paraphrase is taking something maybe a little bit smaller and putting it into your own words. But 
it's not just putting it into your own words. It's also um, making it your own, making it sound like your words, <laughs> your thoughts. Um, you still have to give credit, you still have to cite it, but it should still be your words. And then of course, a direct quotation is where you take something word for word from the source and that needs to be in quotation marks, right? So just a little refresher there. Um, remember that you have to cite any information that you get from another source. However you present it, whether it's a summary, a paraphrase, or a direct quote, there has to be a citation involved. Plagiarism is going to look very obvious if you have copied and pasted. It's going to, you know, if you have failed to cite the source, if you have not put in the quotation marks, if it's a direct quote, even if you cite it, it still has to have the quotation marks if it's word for word. If you confuse the material from your sources with your own ideas. Um, it's very tricky to make sure that you don't pass off someone else's words or someone else's ideas as your own. Um, I wanna look, we're gonna skip down to slide nine on the PowerPoint. And this is a list of um, other types of source abuses, other ways that you can mishandle your, your research. Um, if you're using your sources inaccurately, um, you, you haven't understood all of the words being used in the original source, and you then go ahead and still try to use that to support your own argument, but turns out you didn't fully understand what the source was saying and now it doesn't back up what you say. Or maybe you, in your haste to get the essay typed up, you're, you, you get rushed and you use the wrong words in the source, like words that are similar but not quite the same thing or words that are spelled similarly but mean totally different things. Um, and then you're giving the wrong impression. You're actually giving false information. Uh, if you're using the source material out of context, you know, you're taking one statement out of an essay that is actually against your point of view. It's an opposing point of view, but there's one sentence in it that you could make sound like it, it is in support of your point of view, and you do, so you use it. But that's not using that sort, that's using it out of context. That's not what the original author intended that statement to say. Um, if you're overusing source material, this is when you're, even if you're citing it correctly, where like every three sentences, I see a citation. That means you're overusing your sources. I always tell students it should be like 85% your own original words and thoughts. Those sources are really just there to help you show the reader that you are making a solid point, right? The sources are not the backbone of the essay. Your thoughts, your argument is the backbone of the essay. If you're you plunking quotations, again, that's just like dropping them down in the paragraphs. Um, you're not introducing them, you're not explaining them, they're just getting picked up and plunked down into the essay. If you're using blanket citations, that means like you've got a paragraph and you have referred to a source in it um, maybe midway through. In the middle of the paragraph, you used information from a source and you just put the citation at the end of the paragraph. That's a blanket citation. Well, that makes your reader think that whole paragraph came from that source, but really it was just one little section in the middle. That's why we put the parentheses, the citation, immediately after the part that came from that source. Don't use blanket citations. Um, don't rely too heavily on just one source. You're required to have a few different sources for this essay. Use them all equally, right? Um, another thing that happens 
that could be considered an abuse of sources is when your in-text citations don't match up to your reference page entries. And the rule is, if you remember this, anything you get from a, from a source, anything you get from a source has to be cited in the parentheses in the essay. Whenever you use information from a source, you cite it. So anything that's cited in the essay, that source needs to appear on the reference page at the end. On the flip side of that, anything that's listed on the reference page at the end, any source that's listed there, all of those sources have to be used at least once in the essay. There should not be a source on your reference in page that you didn't actually cite in the essay somewhere. Let's say you, you had three sources that you could possibly use and you only ended up citing two of them in the essay. Take that third source off the reference page. If you did not take use information from it in the essay, it can't stay on the reference page. So anything cited in the essay has to be on the reference page. Anything on the reference page should show up in the essay at least once, All right? Um, the last few slides kind of give you some scenarios to help you determine what plagiarism looks like. And so our first scenario says you've written a paper on the legalization of marijuana for your first year seminar class. Um, you make a few changes to it and then turn it in for another course. Could that be considered um, being academically dishonest? And it could. Um, I know that seems crazy. It's your paper, but that's just sort of the etiquette of academia. And if you have written the paper for another class, you are supposed to get permission before you use it again. Um, I have no idea what instructors say to that. Uh, I know me personally, when I was in graduate school, I had a, a, a class I took that um, there was an essay that I had written for another class that ended up working really well with what I was doing in this current class. And I asked the current professor, I told him exactly what class I had been in before, what the paper was about, why I thought it would be useful. I did have to make a few modifications to it because I needed to take it further for this new class. And he was okay with it. He let me do it. Um, I can't promise all instructors are going to be that way, but just know that it could be considered um, a form of plagiarism. It's academically dishonest. So if you happen to get caught using a paper for one class that you've already turned in for another, just know that you run that risk if you haven't gotten permission. Um, discussing or using lecture notes in your essay, something that um, the professor or the instructor has said during class or their PowerPoint slides or their handouts or something like that. Could it be considered plagiarism if you, you refer to those in your essay? And probably not, but you, why not talk to the instructor and see if you guys can figure out a way to cite it, to give credit to the instructor in some way, All right? Um, another scenario uh, on slide 11. So it says, in a paper on the history of hate speech in America, you find this passage in a fall 2001 article in the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy um, by Jennifer Rothman. So the original is given there. Um, you decided to use the quote as is. Um, could it be considered academically dishonest? Well, you see that the quotation marks are there. You've got the, the parenthetical citation, the author's last name, and the page number. So why could that possibly be considered plagiarism? Because the answer says probably not, but it could be. How could it be? It's quoted, the quotation marks are there, I've cited it, I've done everything right. How could that possibly be plagiarism or any kind of academic dishonesty? The reason is if you read that, that passage really carefully, we've got some pretty big words in there, you know, virtual anonymity, um, proliferation, uh, widely disseminated internet speech. Those are some big words that most of us do not use on a daily basis. If you don't understand what those words mean, but you use that passage anyway, then yes, 
that because you're using someone else's ideas without even understanding them. If you know what those words mean, then it's all good. And you're using the passage correctly within the context of your essay and your ideas, then you're fine. It's just keep in mind, though, that if you're reading something and you don't fully understand that source, make sure you do fully understand it before you end up using it in the paper in some way. Um, another scenario here on slide 12, uh, you've decided to paraphrase that passage instead. Do you remember the original? The law surrounding threats has gained recent attention from commentators after decades of virtual anonymity and unaddressed confusion among the lower courts. The sudden interest in threats has been sparked primarily by the proliferation of widely disseminated internet speech. So your paraphrase is this. The law surrounding threats has gained notoriety lately after many years of virtual anonymity and unsolved confusion among the lower courts. The sudden interest in threats have been raised mostly by the increase of internet use to spread messages. First of all, some of the words are still exactly the same. Um, you have given the citation, uh, but you've still plagiarized the entire sentence structure. All you did was change a few words. That's still, that's still plagiarism even though you cited it. You still have to, a true paraphrase is going to truly put those ideas into your own words. It should not resemble the original this closely, right? We might as well just quote it. <laughs> um, we've got another example on slide 13. We've got the original and then how the student used it in their paper. Um, I don't even think we see a citation there, so that's a red flag right away. But even if there was a citation, um, if you look in the right-hand column there, um, we've taken what the student wrote, right? The section from the student's paper. And everything that's in italics is exactly how it appeared in the original passage, and anything that's in bold is what the, the student added. And there's only three words added. Everything else is in italics. It still came pretty much exactly from the original source. So that's really a quote, right? So you have to be very careful how you're presenting the source information. If you don't want to use a direct quote, and the only time you should use a direct quote is really when the author, the original author says it so well that you just don't even want to mess with how it's stated. Otherwise, you should always be putting things into your own words, but you really have to commit to putting it into your own words. You have to make sure that that is truly what you've done. Okay. Um, and then we have a similar one on slide 14, same thing. Um, we've got the original and then we have how the student used that source, you know, from the student's paper. And if we look here, we've got mostly italics, more bolded words, more words from the student than on the previous slide. Um, but we've pretty much cut and pasted parts of that original passage. And that's not good. Again, you might as well just use a direct quote so that you don't get accused of basically plagiarizing, you know, even if you've signed it or cited it. It's very tricky sometimes. But I think what I really want you guys to remember from this is you do have to use the sources that you've gathered, you do need to refer to them throughout the essay, but only to give your own ideas more punch. Be confident in the argument that you are presenting and then use those sources to just kind of give you a little extra boost, if you will.
I, I almost suggest sometimes it's a little bit more work in some ways, but I always tell students, write the first draft without referring to any sources. Just write it, write your own thoughts from start to finish. And then go back through your sources and pick out the sections that you thought would work in the essay. And then look at your draft and figure out, okay, this is where I can use source number one to help back up my point. And then pick out a specific section of source number one, whether it's a direct quote or a paraphrase or a summary, and then incorporate that into what's already there in the draft, right? It's a good way to make sure that you are resting on your own ideas and that the sources are there to simply boost you up a little bit, right? Um, that's all for this PowerPoint. If you have any questions or comments um, about it, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, you can move on to the next item in the module.